Hey, Joe. Hey, Dave. Glad you're here. Uh, we appreciate that you're giving us this opportunity to uh, interview you. Yeah, so it's good to be here. Tell me about yourself. Why are we here talking with you? Well, I'm, I'm a gardener, um, and I have been ever since I was a little kid. Um, and I, I'm a specific kind of gardener. A lot of times people think of growing things as growing corn or growing tomatoes, and, and I do that, yeah. But for the most part, I really like to garden for wildlife. So I call myself a wildlife gardener. And uh, what does that mean? Well, I like to plant plants that act as habitat, habitat uh, for many different creatures that uh, can inhabit a garden. And one of those creatures that can inhabit a garden and, and use flowers in a big way uh, are bees. So where is here? Here is, is Tenino, Washington, and we're a small town that's in the South Puget Sound uh, of Washington State, the South Puget Sound region. And my house sits kind of smack dab in the middle of the South Puget Sound prairie country. And if you haven't been out to the prairies in the South Sound, uh, they're a pretty special place. Uh, they, you know, just vast fields of, of flowers um, and a lot of really beautiful habitat, especially during the months of May and June. Joe, how did you get into raising bees? Yeah, yeah raising bees. So I, I raise bees at a really big scale now, um, but I had to start really small. I started with blue orchard bees uh, way back when, maybe 10 years ago or so. And I just found a few that were using a, a hole actually in the window of my house. <laughs> and I got some tubes from the local nursery and I started raising them and I've gone from, you know, those three or four bees to tens of thousands right now. Um, so over time, watching those bees grow in number, I started to notice that there were a lot of other bees that were coming in to use the same reeds and laminates and, and other whole structures that I had set up for the bees. Uh, and I started to get really curious about these bees. Um, they there was this one, the very first one really that I, I took strong notice of was this brilliant green bee. And I know that blue orchard bees are green um, and they're, they're also kind of blue too. But this was different. But this was different, yeah. yeah. This was like like laser beam emerald green, spectacular creature. And of course I was really excited, hey, I want more of these around. And So, so what'd you do? Yeah, so I I made some uh, some bee boards and I made little holes in them because I, I was kind of familiar with how leaf cutters tended to use smaller holes. So I thought, well, maybe this will work because it's a smaller bee. This green bee was really tiny. And so I, I made some boards with really tiny holes and I stopped, started to see them use them. And after I started to see them use them, I started to go out to my garden and really observe the plants. And I saw these bees using certain flowers. And I thought, well, hey, if I want to increase my chances, Maybe I could plant some more of that flower and maybe I could put some more bee boards with some smaller holes in. And I did this over time and wow, yeah, I was able to increase the populations of that bee and they're pretty spectacular. So Joe, I'm down here uh, purposely because you're successfully raising bees in these small four millimeter holes. How many species are you raising? Oh, that's a great question. Now, you know that really bright green bee I was mm -hmm. talking about? That was, I found out, was a type of mason bee. And uh, it, it's really neat. It moves in and out of the holes really fast. So I call it the green flash bee. That's a good name. Yeah. Scientific. <laughs> so so that was kind of my first little bee or... or uh, a small solitary bee that I was raising in the four millimeter tube size. Uh, since then, I've gotten so many different bees. Um, boy, they're really hard to count, but there's maybe as few as seven, as many as 10 species that I'm actively managing. I know that sounds kind of odd that I don't know exactly how many species there are. But all, all season long, all yeah. in the spring, where are they at? Yeah, so no, they're throughout the whole season. Um, from at, Almost just a few days after the blue orchards emerge is my first uh, of the smaller solitary bees. And that's a bee called Protosmia rubiflorus. 
So you have ID'd one. Yeah, <laughs> I have ID'd one. All right, let's go out and look at him. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, this is it. This is the bee hotel? Yeah, this is my main bee hotel for the smaller bees. And it has about, you know, Wait, when it's... What's going on here? Oh, that was a hornet. And it's actually using its mandibles to gather some of the wood pulp off the side oh, of it. Oh, for its nest? Its nest. Yeah. What about this guy down here? Yeah, and that is a, a European paper wasp. It's, wasp. it's doing the same thing. Same thing. Same okay, thing, so, yeah. okay, that's interesting. Okay, so tell me <laughs> yeah, more. So, Sorry so, about uh, that. That's an aside. Lots of diversity uses this, this habitat. It's more than just... Uh, holes for bees. So how many bees are actively nesting right here? Well, so there's about seven or eight hundred holes that are available for the bees to use. Right now it's it's May, so it's early in the season. And there's about, there's two or three species right now that are, are using it uh, in any number. Uh, maybe some more, but I'd have to sit here for a long time to detect them. Cool. Yeah. So we're close in. Tell me what's going on here now. Okay, what's going on here is it's early season. So like I said, it's May. So gee, look at that. There's a bee poking her head out of there. That is a Protasmia rubifloris. And that is a really early season solitary bee that uh, is a generalist, but I seem to find it associated with a really popular garden shrub called red flowering currant. And there's one, she's carrying resin back to her nest. And oh, so it's a resin using bee. Yeah, it's a resin using bee and she uses it to, uh, to block off the chambers where she lays the eggs uh, and to protect her. So what I also like property. though is that you've got, these are six millimeter laminates that you've put the four millimeter tubes into. Yeah. Better spacing, this versus reeds, what's your take on that? Yeah, the spacing seems to be uh, something that's important because I've tried reeds and I've tried really small reeds with these bees and it doesn't seem to have the same effect. There might be some element to uh, the spacing or to the material that's in the, uh, in the inserts that seems to really attract the bees. And so right now you've got, you said, uh, protagonist, is that the word? Protosmia. Protosmia. Yeah, protoosmia. And who else is using this? Is that just those right, right now that we can see? Yeah, that's what we can see right now. There are some other bees using this. Uh, there was one of those green flash bees that uh, is coming out of a hole right here. So actually this hole right here, we just had a green flash bee fly into, and we just had another one fly into here. <laughs> wow. And they are they are so fast, I'd be surprised if we can catch one on so camera. So the protosmia is a resin using bee? Yeah, the protosmia is protosmia. a, yep, it's a resin using bee, it uses the resin, uh, and the same way that a blue orchard bee uses mud. So a blue orchard bee uses that mud. And what to, about the green flash bee? And the green flash bee takes, uh, it, it takes, pieces of vegetation and it chews them up and really compacts them to line its nest with and to protect oh, its, just its eggs and its young, yeah. Joe, you're raising seven different species. How do you determine which species is using which hole? Uh, well, there's a few factors at play. One is the time of year can be a clue, like Protosmia rubifloris, it only flies during the early spring and maybe a, a few days in early summer. Uh, but a lot of it's just appearance. You can tell the, uh, the bees by, by their features. Um, by looking at a field guide, a favorite field guide of mine is bees in your backyard. Seems to have some really great photos. So then you see going in that nesting hole, you're pulling it out, writing down a little clue to give yourself something to yeah. focus on later on during the season when everything's done. Right. So when I see a certain bee using the nest, I take my tweezers out, I grab the, I grab the, uh, the tube and 
take it out, and you can see just a moment ago I wrote on there PR for Protasmia rubiflorus. Oh, that's just awesome. Yeah. Joe, this has been a great conversation. Tell me again how easy this is. Well, you know, it's, it's really easy, actually, and, and it's super fun. And for the person who likes to be surrounded by life and diversity uh, and who wants an excuse to buy more flowers, well, <laughs> this, is, this is a great reason for that. So uh, what you need to do is you need to first you know, get yourself some tubes protect them in four um, millimeter tubes four millimeter tubes yeah small tubes protect them in a laminate because uh, there might be targets of parasites uh, put them in a sunny spot sit back and watch them take some notes and work on adjusting your habitat to consider the perspective of the bee awesome thanks john thanks dave